everyone, this is Lauren. So today I'm going to talk about a kind of sensitive subject, um, as you can probably tell by the title. But the only reason I feel like I should talk about it is because I feel like this could maybe be helpful um, to someone going through this experience or, um, I don't know, just someone wanting to know more information, um, just putting kind of information out there. Um, so I thought I would share my experience with you, even though it's not necessarily the most pleasant experience, um, but it's life and just sometimes things happen. So basically, um, I found out I was pregnant on July like 19th or something like that, and according to my period tracker on my phone, I was due March 20th. So I um, told my husband, um, I told a few like close friends, um, I told a couple random people, um, I told my mom, I told my dad, um, you know, just I told people. Um, and it's not that big of a deal. Um, my husband told all the people that he works with. Um, I don't know. He just, you told people. I went in for my appointment on, I don't know what date my appointment was scheduled for, but I was supposed to be about eight weeks on my first appointment. And at that appointment, it was a regular appointment. They took my blood pressure. I peed in a cup. And then um, they did a dating ultrasound. And at the dating ultrasound at that point um, then put me back eight days. So it made my new due date March 28th. Um, so that's probably when there was something initially like wrong uh, because the baby wasn't measuring where um, it should have been at that point. Um, but there was a heartbeat and everything. Um, and when you see the ultrasound on the screen and it's that early, it literally looks like a little peanut and you see this flashing like thing and that's the heart. That's um, you see that flashing light. Um, so yeah, so I went to that and then everything seemed fine except, you know, I got dated back a little bit. And so that made me a little uncomfortable because I actually um, filmed like weekly pregnancy vlogs. Um, as soon as I found out, um, I filmed them. I don't know that I should post them now, um, but I filmed them and uh, I don't know, I was, I was excited. Um, I'm not, I'm going to say I'm not sad. I'm disappointed, but I'm not sad, um, and I'll tell you the reasoning behind that, but, um, so I found out, we went, and it was, like, a little bit behind, so that made me a little uncomfortable to start telling more people, um, just because, I don't know, just was weird a little bit, I, I told the, the ultrasound tech was like, well, are you sure that's when your period was, is that when you, when did you test, um, and I told her I was breastfeeding, and she said, oh, that's probably, um, why you're, uh, off a little bit. And I just thought, oh, okay, that's why. Because um, my periods haven't been regular um, since I've been breastfeeding. I think I got my period back at like two or three months, like something ridiculous, where most people don't get their period back until nine months. Doesn't mean I was ovulating in that time period, but I got it back early. And then the last month, um, like in June, I think my period had been like 28 days. And I was like really happy that it was getting back to like a regular amount of time. But anyway, so... Um, it went back a week, and then um, everything seemed fine. I, the difference between this pregnancy and my previous pregnancy is that um, my boobs hurt really, really bad. Um, they were a lot bigger, but I'm breastfeeding, so I don't know that that could be a symptom. My skin got really perfect with my previous pregnancy. This one, it just kind of stayed blah. The only symptoms that I had were kind of nausea and... Um, extreme fatigue, which I did have with my last pregnancy. So I was getting pregnancy symptoms and I had pretty severe fatigue for about two weeks from like eight to nine or eight, to, eight to 10 weeks. I believe I had pretty extreme fatigue still, um, a little bit after that. Uh, but, uh, it's kind of lessened and I'm like, Oh, well, that's because I'm getting further along. Um, so I had symptoms and everything and bloating and uh, but I felt pretty good, and I felt pretty good in my last pregnancy. Um, so really, <laughs> I'm just going to say, like, symptoms-wise, uh, it seemed like a normal pregnancy, so I didn't really have that much fear, especially when I got the extreme fatigue. I'm like, yes, I have, like, a symptom. Everything's looking good. Um, and then I had my next appointment at, I feel like I've had... I want to say that I've had three appointments. I had another appointment. I just 
swear I had another, I swear I've had three appointments. One where they didn't do any kind of ultrasound thing or um, heartbeat thing or anything where I just got like blood work and I had to do some kind of saliva test and um, a couple other things. So I think I had another appointment in between and um, that was fine. Uh, but then recently, um, on Thursday actually, I had an appointment for um, 11 weeks and at the 11 week appointment I went in uh, everything like you pee in the cup, they take your blood pressure, everything's fine. Um, I had to do the saliva test over again because my saliva test um, didn't provide enough cells so I'll get the results of that. Um, but at my 11 week appointment the doctor came in and then he went to find the heartbeat and he couldn't find the heartbeat on the little Doppler. So then he's like, oh, well, I'm just going to go get the ultrasound machine. So he brought in this like ultrasound machine that looked like really old. And then he brought that in and he was looking on my stomach and you could see the baby in there. It was like a really like small screen, like really big computer. Um, and you could see the baby in there, but he wasn't seeing the little flicker, but it was really like an old machine. So he's like, I'm going to have you go into the ultrasound room and we're just going to um, check in there. So then I went in the ultrasound room and um, she did the uh, ultrasound on the belly. And when she pulled it up on the belly, um, I saw like the baby on the screen, but you didn't see a flickering, but the way the baby was positioned almost seemed like um, maybe you wouldn't, I don't know. It just kind of still gave you like a little moment of like hope there still was something that wasn't completely wrong. And then she's like, I'm gonna do this vaginally. So I had a vaginal ultrasound and the baby was on the screen, but I knew immediately that there was no heartbeat because that flicker that you see on the screen, um, it just wasn't there. And when I talk about it, it kind of makes me sad a little bit. Um, but I'm really not sad. I just, I am disappointed, but I'm not really sad. I'm just disappointed. Um, and I didn't cry there. I cr the only time I've cried is when I called my husband. Um, this was also the first time that I left my baby. I'm so glad that I left him. Um, I left him for three hours with my dad. <laughs> so I left him with my dad for three hours. And I'm just so happy that um, I didn't bring him to this appointment because it was a long drawn out appointment. Um, and it was just a disappointing appointment, but I went in there and she didn't say anything. Um, but there was no heartbeat. I didn't say anything. She just all of a sudden started doing lots of measurements, um, just measuring the baby. Uh, and she probably did that for about 20 minutes and not speaking or anything. So I'm just like sitting there like, okay, the baby doesn't have a heartbeat. Um, I guess like that's, you know, that's what it is. And I'm just thinking like, what's what's the next step to this? And she's like, you haven't had any spotting. I think that's the only thing she asked me. She's like, you haven't had any spotting or anything? I'm like, no. Um, so then she went, she's like, I'm gonna go get the doctor now. And she came in with the doctor and he's like, I don't have good news, there's no heartbeat. And like, I'm like thinking like, yeah, I know, I see that. Um, and uh, he then he's like, let me show you. And so he pulled up on the screen again, um, and he just pulled up the baby, and it's just kind of sad because the baby, um, there's still a baby in there, and um, it's just kind of lifeless and kind of like hunched over. <laughs> um, yeah, it was just like that. So um, she showed me, and he pulled up the screen, and there was like a line above the baby, and he said that, um, he said that there was like a membrane or something, something, and he's like, this is there. It mean, it usually means there's some kind of chromosomal, I can't even say the word, chromosomal, chromosomal, you know what I'm saying, abnormality. Um, and, uh, and yeah. <laughs> so he said something went wrong, um, and that's probably why I was measuring um, a week behind initially, is because something just wasn't right. And he's like, it doesn't mean he's like this ha this happened in this pregnancy and it ends in this pregnancy so it's just something that when um when the baby was formed something just didn't go right um and it ends here so i still um i'm fearful for my next pregnancy because uh that was at 11 weeks and usually at that point you think you're in the clear um so it just it's a little like I don't know. It's a little bit like fear. A little fear comes into you, but I still am very 
hopeful. And um, the only thing that kept going through my mind when I was there is how lucky I am because I do have one healthy, perfect baby. Um, so my life really is complete. I still would like to have more children and we will try to have more children. Um, but uh, that one just wasn't meant to be. Um, so the doctor then told me that I had three options <laughs> and there were, I could either um, have a miscarriage naturally, which um, it just doesn't seem, <laughs> it doesn't feel to me like it didn't feel right to do that because um, I didn't necessarily want to walk around with a dead baby inside me. Um, it just doesn't sound happy and appealing, which I did do for a couple days because the next option um, was to take pills vaginally. And the third option was to have the baby suction out, a D and C. Um, and I opted for the pills. Um, so I took the pills on Saturday night because my husband doesn't work on Sunday or Monday. Um, and Saturday was his birthday. <laughs> um, so I opted for the pills. Um, and it was like, it, I don't know, it just, you take four pills and you put them up your vagina and they, uh, I don't know, then the process begins and then 12 hours later, um, I had to take more um, pills and really all I've had, and they told me whenever I was going to take these pills that I would have extreme cramping and um, a lot, a lot of heavy blood loss and um, I didn't have any cramps and um, I had a little, like I had a lot of blood loss and I had lots of clotting coming out and they told me I'd potentially see the baby um, come out, which sounds a little traumatic, so I don't know, but I never saw anything. Um, so I'm a little fearful because I haven't been back to the doctor yet. I'm going back this afternoon actually. Um, I'm a little fearful that not everything came out and I'm going to have to do the DNC, which I really don't want to do because you have to go under anesthesia, I think. I'm not 100% sure. Um, but I don't know. So yeah, so that's what I opted for. Um, that's what I've experienced over the weekend. Um, Saturday, uh, and I didn't have any bad cramps. They gave me all kinds of pain medicine. I didn't have any cramps. I just had bleeding and everything. It just, it wasn't a bad experience. Um, that's what I've gone through. Um, on Saturday was actually my husband's birthday, so I took the pills on his birthday night. Um, but I don't know. It, it's like it's not a fun experience, but I've thought like I've thought about it, and I'd rather if something's going to happen, um, I'd rather I'd rather it be like this. Um, I'd rather it happen now. I wish it happened sooner in my pregnancy, where I'm not like 11 weeks along, um, but. I don't know. I'd just rather it happen now. Um, like next week, I had an appointment scheduled this Thursday, actually, for my 12-week ultrasound um, for like measurements and make sure everything's good. And I just can't imagine if I had to go into that appointment and there was a baby with a heartbeat, but something was considerably wrong with the baby. And, um, and I had to make a choice. Um, I just don't know how I would feel about making like that choice to be like, oh, well, I will need to terminate this pregnancy because of this going on, or um, I don't know. I don't know. It just, I'm just happy that it happened the way it did. Um, it's a sad circumstance, and I just don't think that it should be something that's dwelled on, though. Um, I just think that you just have to think positively. Like, um, I do have one healthy baby, um, so I don't have really a fear that I'll have any Hard, I like a hard time having any more healthy babies. Um, I read online that like 15 to 20 pregnancies end in miscarriage. So I feel like the whole reason I wanted to make this video was because um, they're really, miscarriages are a little bit more common than you think. Um, and they can happen to the healthiest people um, for just just something could go wrong and it could just happen. And I don't want to put fear in anybody when I say that. Um, so that's not the point of this video, but I just, I feel like I want to do this video because um, if anyone's having a hard time because they've experienced something like this, I just don't want those people to lose hope. Um, 
I hope that makes sense. Um, I just don't want those people to lose hope. I have a girlfriend that had um, her first pregnancy ended in miscarriage. And so I talked to her a little bit about it and um, she didn't, I think she was only about eight weeks along. And, um, and uh, she just, I asked her, I'm like, were you just really scared with your next pregnancy that it would end that way? And she said she wasn't. Um, and I was surprised because I think that if it happened before you have any children, you'd be like absolutely terrified the next go around. And she just, she said she just wasn't. Um, it just, it's something that happens. She's a pretty healthy person too. And it just happens. It just happens sometimes. And she's gone on to have two healthy children. So that just is something that I felt like just gives you like a good hope. Like it's not that something's necessarily wrong with you. Um, and even like when I was at the doctor's office, I'm like, well, when, um, how, how old was the baby? Like when this happened and she's like, well, he's measuring or well, it's measuring about, um, like I think 10 weeks and like four days is what it said on the screen. And I was there for like an 11 week appointment. So she's like, it happened fairly recently. So, um, I don't know what my point with what that, with that was, but, um, I, I, oh, I know because I, I was thinking like, oh, what day of the week was that? Did I do something that I shouldn't have done? Like the still, it still goes on in your mind. Like, was there something I did and there was nothing I did. Um, and I knew that, but I still had that thought go through my mind. Like, did I do something? Um, and I didn't. So I am very hopeful for my next pregnancy. Um, I'm going to ask today how long I have to wait to try again. Um, some good things that happened out of this, because I think every bad situation, um, there's positive to come out of it, even though it's not what you want to happen. Um, and it's, it is sad, but it's, I feel like it's not sad. I feel like it's just, I really do feel like it's disappointing um, because I do want to have more children, um, but I don't feel like sad because I have a really great child already. Um, so I don't feel the need to have more, if that makes sense. I would like to have more children because I really feel as though um, this is something I've been really good at is being a mom and I love being a mom. But I love being Graham's mom, <laughs> and so I'm not really fearful of that. But um, so I'm just, it's a disappointing situation, but good things come out of it. So um, I don't know, I feel like it humbles you a little bit. Like, I don't know, I just feel like sometimes you think like you're invincible and you realize that we're all human and things happen and it's just the way it is. Um, but uh, what else good happened out of this? Oh! <laughs> Um, I was forced to stop breastfeeding. Um, my son is 17 months, he turned 17 months yesterday. Um, and I was forced to stop breastfeeding. My boobs look huge right now, uh, because they are full of milk. They are like ridiculously huge. So that's another thing I'm going to ask the doctor about is if they have any suggestions, like if there's a pill I can take to like make the milk go away or something. But I was forced to stop breastfeeding and it wasn't bad. Um, I didn't want to stop breastfeeding. No, I did want to stop breastfeeding, but I, um, and I think I'm going to do a whole video on breastfeeding, um, and weaning because it's been really an easy experience, a lot easier than I actually thought it was. Um, another thing is I was able to eat sushi. <laughs> like that's not necessarily something, but I'm like, I told my girlfriend, I'm like, well, now that this happened, I'm going to have, I get to have pumpkin beer and I'm going to have sushi. <laughs> and those are the things that I'm going to have before I get pregnant again. Um, but I don't know. It just it just trying to be lighthearted a difficult situation, and um, yeah, I just wanted to share my experience. Um, I didn't have any cramping or anything with the pills, which I'm a little bit nervous about. So um, I actually had my appointment still for um, this coming Thursday uh, for the ultrasound to make sure everything worked as it should, um, and the baby passed and everything through. Um, but I called this morning because I just. I wanted to make sure, I don't know, I just, something just doesn't, I don't know, I just don't like the idea of walking around with a dead baby inside of me, it just, it doesn't feel good, like, it just is not a good situation. Um, I didn't have any signs of having a miscarriage, um, I didn't have any kind of bleeding yet, um, I had nothing, um, so 
sometimes things go wrong and I still felt pregnant. I still had nausea when I didn't eat uh, enough, uh, or not enough, but when I was, it was time to eat, I would get nauseous. Um, I was still tired. Um, my energy has come back though, so um, that's good. <laughs> but uh, there were no signs or symptoms that this was going to happen. I did everything as I should. Um, it's just sometimes these things happen. So um, my point being is that sometimes bad situations happen um, and you just have to look at, look and hope for the best. Um, I know it's hard uh, because it just is, it's hard. Um, it can just, and you don't think that it's gonna happen to you, not, you don't necessarily think it's going to happen to you, uh, but it's hard. And I just want people to know that it happens to other people and it happens to, it can happen to anybody. And, um, and I'm not saying that to put fear in anybody that this hasn't happened to. It's more of something to, to talk to the people that it has happened to. And I just want you not to blame yourself. And um, I don't know, I just felt like when I looked up information on this happening, um, I wasn't getting a whole lot. And I was getting like a lot of, then when I would see a video, they were people that like, I saw one where the person had like, they're like, this is my third pregnancy and my first two were healthy and they were like extremely upset and I think that they were only six weeks pregnant and I know that like it can be a very traumatic thing but I'm like, you know, you have to be thankful for, you do have two healthy children, like some people don't have any children and you're lucky, <laughs> like you're really lucky. So there's just certain things to be thankful for. If you um, had a miscarriage and you're, you know, trying again and you are scared, um, it's okay to have that fear, but don't lose hope. That's basically what I'm saying is don't lose hope. Um, cause it can happen to, you know, just anybody. It can, it can. Um, but that is it. So, um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I just thought I would make this and, um, I don't know, moving on, moving forward. Um, uh, if, if for some reason, if you have any questions, feel free to post them below. Um, if for some reason everything didn't go as planned, maybe, um, maybe I'll make another video. I don't know that it's going to necessarily be, but if I have to do like another procedure or something, maybe I will just to share my experience. Um, but yeah, that's basically it. Um, I feel like I, when I'm talking about it in front of the camera, I feel like, I don't know, I just, I don't, I, I feel like, I feel like I should be sad, and so I, I don't know, it's just, it's a weird feeling talking about it um, to no one. <laughs> I've been thinking about it, and I haven't been sad, um, I just, I just am so, I'm happy that it happened, um, rather than having to make like some kind of decision um, or having something bad happen in the future. Um, it wasn't a healthy child being being brewed up inside me. <laughs> um, I wish it was a healthy baby because that's all I hope for in pregnancy are healthy children. Um, and I've also, lately, I've been seeing so many pregnancy announcements out there. And so I know that if this has happened to you, um, I, for me, I'm not sad when I see other pregnancy announcements. Like this morning I saw um, uh, the prince, uh, what's his name? I, uh, sorry, <laughs> I can't think of his name. Um, Princess Kate and what? Oh, I can't think of his name for the life of me. Whatever. They're expecting their second child, and I'm so happy. Like, I don't know. And then I see other people that I like that they have children um, or they don't have children and they're expecting. And I don't know. I just, I think having a baby is a special thing and I think it's great for anybody experiencing it and I don't think that um, anybody should feel bitter or like upset when they see this happening around them um, and I know that it can be hard because every announcement I see on my Facebook wall is like I'm pregnant I'm pregnant we're expecting and I'm just like oh man uh, like I just lost a baby and I was excited a little bit too but it'll happen again you know what I mean um, so um, that's it. So I will talk to you all very soon. Questions down below and I'll probably make a bit breastfeeding weaning video because 
it's like the greatest thing that's ever happened to me. Um, and hopefully I'll get something to control my boobs. If you have situ if you um, have weaned a baby off breastfeeding and you know what to do with your boobs, um, I try to express some of the milk and stuff. Um, but this is actually more painful than anything I've experienced um, is my engorged boobs. So, all right, goodbye.